Good afternoon and welcome to St. Ambrose. Our opening song today is number 450, Amazing Grace, 450. <clears throat> from Father Albert saying that he got there and uh, that he is uh, grateful for our prayerful support while he's away from us and that's about it. <laughs> Dear friends, let's um, pray that our hearts may be open to the Word of God, that the Word of God may change our hearts to be like the heart of Jesus. And so let us acknowledge that we need the healing, saving, guiding Word which will be spoken to us this evening, and the food that Jesus himself is for our journey. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you speak of peace to your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you hold out to us a new kind of freedom Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you become the food for our journey. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. James. <coughs> what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but not, does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without <coughs> works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. <coughs> disciples set out for the villages around Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others, Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, you are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this, he turned around and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel, save it. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
the absolutely easiest trap for us to fall into is what you might call a no-brainer. A way of thinking that comes so naturally to us that we just take it for granted. What's the trap? The trap is thinking that what I think is right. Well, oh yeah. <laughs> if, if I'm thinking about it, if I'm thinking this, this is right, oh, it's, it's right, right? Sure. The Apostle Peter, the one who's always at the head of the lists of the 12 in the Gospels, the one who speaks up when the others are still thinking, still trying to catch up with Jesus' question, Peter doesn't have to think. Jesus questions the disciples about what they've heard, what other people are saying about him. Who do people say that I am? What are you hearing? And one says, well, John the Baptist. Another adds, Elijah. Someone else chimes in, or one of the prophets anyway. And then Jesus asks the question. That's the noise on the street. But what about you boys? We've been together pretty close for some time now. Who do you say that I am? And it's Peter who says to Jesus in reply, you are the Christ. Jesus, with no word of caution, no qualification of Peter's insight, warns them not to tell this to anyone else. Then Jesus begins to teach them what he knows. That this news, not just the words, the Christ, the, the Messiah, the anointed one of God, what those words mean to some of the people in power he knows that this news will lead to the confrontation that will require the sacrifice of himself. The complete subjection of his will to the will of the Father, even when it means trusting his very life into the care, into the control of the Father. He next tells the 12 quite openly what he sees, that he will suffer greatly, that he will be rejected by the respected leaders of the people, the elders, the chief priests, and the students of the law, that he will be killed in the confrontation, and that after three days he will rise. Peter, remember Peter? On hearing this, he tries to get Jesus away from the others, and because he takes for granted that what he thinks must be right, he tries to teach the teacher. Master, that's crazy talk. That can't happen. Jesus cuts him off, and looking around to make sure that the other disciples are getting the message, he helps them all to see that the teacher has a wisdom that comes only from God, a wisdom beyond their power even to imagine. Their so limited view is completely opposed to God's way of thinking. It's tempting, but it's dead wrong. And then he calls the as yet uncommitted folks, the crowd, together with his disciples, and teaches them to expect for themselves what he knows he is doing. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, 
and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. <clears throat> There's more to this life than physical life, is part of what he's saying, important as that is. There's more at stake in how we live, how we believe, how we actually implement our belief than protecting our goodies, guaranteeing our, guaranteeing our position, keeping ahead of the neighbors, whatever seems to be our goal. Our life is our self. And our self is more than the things we have, more even than the ticking away of our heart. What Jesus knows is that the goal of the Father for all of us is a life of communion. Now I'm hearing the letter of James. If you, one of you knows that there are these people over here who do not have food or clothing or housing that you could help them with, and you say, God bless you, keep warm, well fed, that's not faith. That's not trusting them to God. That's abandoning them to their need. To save yourself, Jesus is saying, is to give yourself. To hoard what is yours, including your love, including your attention. To hoard all that is to find it gone. When we were singing the psalm, I thought of Jesus saying those words, I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. And then those verses about, about the suffering, about uh, relying on God to save us. That, those are Jesus' words. Those are Jesus' thoughts. And he invites us to trust in God as surely as he. And to trust the things that we sort of think we have to hold on to, trust them to do some good work with someone else. It is a very difficult thing that Jesus calls us to do. It is a way of the cross. But that is our way because we belong to him. We believe in him. He is our way our truth, our life. May we truly believe in him enough to give ourselves away.
<clears throat> Let's stand together now and and profess our faith. I believe, I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from the Holy Spirit, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and as kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's offer our prayers now with confidence to the wise and loving Father of us all. That the church may continue to be purified and sanctified through the grace and mercy of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That bishops, priests, and deacons may be led by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the truth with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people may come to see that the Lord is their help and their salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who are persecuted for their faith may remain steadfast in hope. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That this community of faith may be guided by the gospel message in our efforts to love one another. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died in Christ may one day rise with him. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our Book of Intentions and those calling and requesting prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister diocese in Ludwar, Kenya, and our sister parish in Guatemala, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Ambrose parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Martha Webster Jenkins and Matthew Carrier, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now invite the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Hail, Hail Mary. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song during the preparation of the gifts is number 414, Jesus the Lord. 414. <laughs>
pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Spirit, this same Holy Spirit, graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, 
having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we will break your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by Jesus' own divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another some sign of peace. Peace, 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 peace. 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 Thank you for singing, peace. darling. Peace, darling. Peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am worthy to be Savior of the Lord. I will only save the earth, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song is number 479, Shelter Me, O God, 479.
Our thanks to the many families who have enrolled your young ones in this year's excellent religious education program, which begins in earnest this weekend, September 15th at 10 a.m. If your family is not yet registered, please take advantage of the online option available on the parish website or through your flock note account or in person at the religious education table in the parish hall. Please be generous in this week's special collection for the Catholic Campaign for Human Development in the United States. Over 11% of the population lives in poverty. Please prayerfully consider how you can support this collection and those working on the margins. More information about the Catholic Campaign <coughs> for Human Development can be found in our bulletin. Thank you to all the volunteers who helped to make the 2024 reunion picnic a huge success. We greatly appreciate all your hard work. Great thanks to the party planners, the setter-uppers, food preparers and donators, the cooks and the cleaner-uppers, and to those people who prepared the ambient party music, who made and brought cornhole games, the putting green, the small horses from Schoolcraft, and the Pope from Rome. It wouldn't have been the same without you. May God bless us all. Amen. Amen. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stand and pray. <laughs> May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 401, Lead Me, Guide Me, 401.